Good morning. Is that a little loud today? Maybe I talk a little louder than Pastor Lop now. I think they're going to adjust it as I talk here. All right, that sounds better. We good? We're glad to be back. Glad to worship our brothers and sisters, receive the Lord's gifts in both word and sacrament today. Our service is printed out in the bulletin. We rise for our first hymn, Come Thou Almighty King. Please stand. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you. For his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Give ear to my prayer, O God. For it is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It is not an adversary who deals in solitude with me, then I could hide from him. But it is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. 
We used to take sweet counsel together. But I call to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of our creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For oh, the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to, to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or, and to hear his word, or has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of, evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? Can, am I, can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies, and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has had a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear the Lord, you his saints. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The epistle is from Hebrews chapters 11 and 12. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who has, had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able to even to raise him from the dead, from which figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings from Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and that they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was growing up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say, for time will f would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the fire, power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies in flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not 
<clears throat> worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had promised something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary of faint-hearted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. This is the gospel of the Lord. The congregation may be seated. We invite the children to come forward for the children's message. <clears throat> How are we doing this morning? You doing well? Hmm? You guys still a little sleepy? Yeah. So, one of the things uh, Max and Isaac are going to tell us about, um, not today, but uh, they're going to give us a report on the youth gathering in a couple weeks or so. And I know, remember I asked Isaac what he liked the best about going to the youth gathering. And he said, well, all these people around me are all Lutherans. It's not the way it normally is for me. But there were 20,000 Lutherans all around him. Can you imagine? And that was encouraging. When we have a lot of people around us who are all going in the right direction, it feels good. It feels like, oh, it's easier to go when there are all these people going. And that's part of what the epistle writer to the Hebrews is talking about. And he starts going down the line and he says, by faith, Abraham did this. By faith, Ruth did this. By faith, Isaac did this. And then he says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Now, if you think about it, 20,000, is that a big number or a small number? Big? Big? Okay. If I gave you 50 donuts, would that be a big number or a small number? Big. Big. Because can you eat 50 donuts? No. What if I gave you 20,000 donuts? No. No. How can we imagine 20,000 donuts? Let's just take a moment. How much space would we need for 20,000 donuts? The so one box is 12. Box, 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 box. So 50 is already a big number when we're talking donuts, right? Is 50 still a big number if we're talking dollars? Yeah? Big number to you guys? We're talking dollars, $50? Gabriel's not so sure. <laughs> He's holding out for more. He says, I'll take the 20,000. So... Numbers are relative. Relative means that if we talk about what if we had 50 brothers and sisters? Oh, that'd be a lot, right? You might say it's a lot if you have seven brothers and sisters. 
Yeah. So 20,000 seems like a lot. But hold on a second. Do you know how many more believers there are than just 20,000? If you think about Al throughout history, how many believers there have been all around the world, not just in our country, but every country, every land, God has raised up believers. So 20,000 is a small number when you think about all the believers. And that's what the writer of Hebrews is saying. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, at the youth gathering, you could see them all, right? Did you count up to 20,000? So you just saw them, but you didn't actually count. One, 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 right? So we can't count all the believers that surround us. He says, it's a great cloud of believers. There are all these people. A lot of times what the devil does is because Christians are looking for the kingdom that's to come and for the blessings that are to come, we go through all these hardships that he also talks about. And we feel like, the devil tells us you're going through the hardship. You're on your own. It's just you. He closes your eyes to the great cloud of witnesses that surround you. The fact that the Holy Spirit is within you. That Jesus is beside you as your good shepherd. He closes your eyes so that you feel alone. And he says, you're not alone. You're surrounded by all the saints who have been baptized before you. Who are cheering you on and saying, you beat back the and you you say, I'm not going to fall for temptation because I, by faith, am going to do what all this great cloud of witnesses is doing around me. By faith, I'm going to love my neighbor. I'm going to forgive my enemy. Christ. Maybe even overcome fire and the sword. Maybe go about in sheepskins and goatskins. We'll see. There's going to be some afflictions. That's what our Gradual says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. And so when you are feeling like you're on your own, remember the great cloud of witnesses, much more than just 20,000. All the saints who have gone before us who are saying, I'm cheering for you. You can do it because God has given the Holy Spirit your heart. The good shepherd is right there by your side. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. By faith, we look to Jesus. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, for every one of those saints that you brought through their race, I'll be at home with you. And we look forward to the day when our eyes will be opened and no longer will we have to believe, but we will see your grace and see all the saints that have gone before. We ask that by faith now we would be encouraged that we would see Jesus and the great cloud of witnesses and know that we're not alone in this race, but that we run with those who encourage us and love us as you love us and encourage us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Nate's got children's bulletins for you, and we'll sing our next hymn. Steadfast in your word, curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your son and bring to naught all he has done. Defend your holy 
church that we may sing your praise eternally. O oh, Comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth. Support us in our final strife. Of death to life. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from the one who is faithful, Christ the Lord. Amen. Our text is the intro it. It is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It's not an adversary who deals insolent with me, then I could hide from him. But it is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. So this intro, our psalm that we spoke at the beginning of the service, it's still one more prophecy in the psalms. The psalms are full of them. Prophecies of the last week of Jesus' life before he died and rose again. It's amazing just how many of the details the psalms cover in prayer. And so if we follow after Jesus, bearing our crosses, these are psalms for us to pray, to find the same strength that he prayed. And so alongside the physical suffering that Hebrews talked about that we know Jesus went through on the cross, there's another kind of suffering that is sometimes worse than some physical suffering, a suffering of betrayal of companions and friends. That heartache that says, I thought they loved me. They were on my side, and they turned out the opposite. And we remember that Jesus suffered the betrayal of many companions and friends. And most of the apostles fled. But one, Judas, sold him out for money. I hope you have not felt this, but I know some of us have. Being betrayed by family and friends is heart-wrenching. And if it happens, it is difficult to let that pain go. The psalmist does the best thing that any of us feeling betrayal can do. He turns to God and he prays. In his prayer, he remembers that though human beings will betray, this is what we are as sinners, God will save. God will abide. God's steadfast love endures forever. And he says, God will not permit the righteous to be moved. I don't worry about what the betrayer does. I stay in God's righteousness given to me as God's gift from above. I will not be moved no matter what he does. If God is for us, who can be against us? This is his prayer. Now, when we're betrayed, the tempter comes along as well. We've got the betrayer attacking us. And the tempter comes and says, oh, uh, this is grist for my mill. I'm going to be able to afflict your faith with this betrayal and this hurt. And he says, you know what you need to do? You need to cut off the one who betrayed you. You need to get back at them. Maybe you're not going to say it out loud. But you're just going to turn them from your heart. Now, that's not what the Bible tells us to do. The tempter doesn't want what's our good, doesn't want the good of any of the people around us, including the betrayer. The tempter says, don't think of that betrayer as friend or family. Think of them as enemy, as evil, as inhuman. The tempter tells us that the pain will go away if we just say, well, they were never my friend. It doesn't work. Some of us know this from having tried it. It doesn't work. Returning for hate, for hate it, it, it doesn't make you feel better. It makes you feel worse. Then you get caught trying to justify the hate. Oh, that goes on even worse. We see that the psalm refuses to stop calling that old friend my familiar friend. And doing that, saying that the one who's betrayed you is my familiar friend, it feels like reopening the wound. It feels like pulling the Band-Aid off and going, yep, still fresh, still hurts. We'll keep going with this. But that's what the psalmist does. He leans into love, remembering the previous affection that is now so hard to remember because of the betrayal. But he has insisted the righteous will not be moved, so he will return mercy for betrayal. 
And so he puts himself back in those days when he walked arm in arm in the Lord's house with his familiar friend because the Lord's house is the place where broken brotherhood can be restored. It takes strength to be able to do this. Strength you can only find by that verse at the front of our bulletin today. Cast your burdens on the Lord. And this is exactly what Hebrews is talking about. Our epistle reading. When it means that the faithful are those of whom the world is not worthy. All those saints of faith. They were betrayed. They were exiled. They were persecuted. But they didn't flee the world. They stayed where they were. The righteous will not be moved. They didn't return curse for curse. They kept hoping in God. And that hope let them keep going in the world. Keep calling brothers, even those who had betrayed them, brother. They abided where others would run for self-protection because they believed that God is our almighty protection, our mighty fortress. Because God abides... We can abide with him. Indeed, we don't want to be anywhere else than where he abides. Now, Judas was not the only one who betrayed Jesus. First, being his friend, dipping his bread in the cup with him, that intimate relationship he had with Jesus, throwing it away. When Jesus, in our gospel reading, he speaks about houses being divided. He's speaking from experience. His own family wants came to where he was preaching and teaching. And they said, little Jesus, it's time to come home. In John chapter 7, it details how his brothers did not believe in him. I imagine it was tough for them. I can't imagine growing up with Jesus as your brother. So he always does everything right. It might be annoying when you're a sinner and your brother's not. I'm not talking from any experience here myself. <sighs> But they didn't just deal with it privately. They came out publicly and showed that they didn't believe him. And that shamed Jesus. It hurt Jesus to be betrayed by his own brothers. And Jesus didn't write them off. He didn't give up on them. We hear in the Bible that one of his few resurrection appearances, he appeared to his brother James. And James and Jude, those two brothers at least, we know, came to believe after the resurrection. The Bible is full of these stories where betrayal is there, but it's just chapter 2. There's a lot more of the book still to be written. Jacob betrayed Esau. Esau welcomed his brother back and kissed him. Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, and Joseph provided for them in a famine, brought them back into the house of Pharaoh. Saul betrayed David, a man he called his son. David saved his father-in-law and kept the country at peace. There are more chapters to be written after chapter 2, betrayal. In the Bible, the chapter of reconciliation is certain to come. Keep going. Abide until you get to that. See, I see Christians go through this. It's not just an Old Testament story long ago. It's not just Jesus' story. It's our story in baptism. Jesus' story is stamped on us in baptism. So when we are betrayed, we have that opportunity that the words, that powerful phrase in Hebrews, the world was not worthy of them. When we are betrayed, it is that opportunity to be one of that number of whom the world is not worthy not withdrawing, not pulling back from where you were hurt, but abiding, continuing as an exile, as one who doesn't have the political power, who everyone looks down on and says, you're no good, continuing and saying, that's fine, say what you want to say. I'm going to keep loving. Continuing as exiles and waiting for God to bring the salvation, for God to bring the reconciliation. It doesn't just encompass believers, what we get to be a part of. The world was not worthy of them, but <laughs> salvation comes to the world through this graceful living. Mercy pours out through believers who say, I'm going to keep calling you friend. This is how we evangelize. 
by showing mercy in a world that's given up on mercy and calls mercy weakness. So in Luke 19, Jesus comes to a betrayer, Zacchaeus, the wee little man, the tax collector. You think about it, Zacchaeus defrauded his neighbors. He was a betrayer. He betrayed his neighbors to get Rome's money. Zacchaeus was not just a wee little man in body. He was a little man. When Jesus found him, that changed. Zacchaeus repented. And he returned money with interest. In some cases, it says fourfold of what he had defrauded people. And Jesus said, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. I want you to hear those words about Zacchaeus, the betrayer. He is also a son of Abraham. <laughs> no, no, no. Zacchaeus threw in with the Romans. He left team Abraham. And that's what everybody else was saying. See, they didn't sing that song in that town, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. They didn't sing his praises the way we've taught our kids to do today. They had plenty to say about Zacchaeus in that village. And everything they said was only true up till chapter 2's ending. It was not true at the end of Zacchaeus' story. How much do we do that thing, like that village of Zacchaeus, where we just talk about chapter 2? We go and we tell all our friends, can you believe what he did in chapter 2? Wait, there's more to the story? What? No, no, no. I want to talk about what happened in chapter 2. And how I was betrayed. He also is a son of Abraham. Those are the words that define Zacchaeus. And the words that define you are not what your neighbors say. It's not what you say about your neighbors. It's what Christ the Lord says on the last day about each of us that defines who we are. Too many of us get caught up in chapter 2. And it robs us of our endurance, our faithfulness, to be the kinds of saints described by the writer to the Hebrews. Instead of being the kind of saint of whom the world is not worthy of, we act just like the rest of the world. I've got to fight for mine, or they'll take it away from me. As Zacchaeus needed to repent, we need to repent. The world needs those of whom the world is not worthy. Needs the church to be the church. And not just one more institution in the world fighting the world's games. The world needs somebody who still believes in mercy and grace. That Zacchaeus can become someone we praise and say, look at Zacchaeus and what the Lord made of him. We need to live in chapter 3, even when we're still feeling chapter 2. To show the kind of mercy that Jesus does, the mercy he's shown to us, to be willing to take up the cross and to follow him and find the relief that there is in taking up the cross, that his burden is light. You have to believe that chapter 2 is not the end of the story. It is far from the end of the story. You have to believe that after three days that Christ will rise again. But those three days are hard days. But he will rise again. You have to believe that the chapter of reconciliation will be written about people it seems impossible to be written about. You have to believe that we too will rise again to a life that is filled to bursting with love and no more of sin and shame. That's how you can live as an exile all through chapter 2. That's how you can forgive the betrayer. Because everything that the betrayer gets done in chapter 2, it gets undone. It doesn't last. God willing, the betrayer may not even stay a betrayer. Just let grace have a go at him and see what God can do. He may turn out to be like Zacchaeus in the sycamore tree. Remember in chapter 2, no one sang the cute songs about Zacchaeus. But the world now knows. I want you to sing the song that we sing about Zacchaeus. About that person who your heart doesn't want to name in this moment. About that person who betrayed you. Who is it? 
in your life that you've written off? That you said, uh uh-uh, I can't even think about them. Without realizing that God's still thinking about them. Still writing a story that you can have a part in. Who have you stopped hoping could come around? Who have you felt betrayed by and not able to forgive? Is it a friend you no longer call friend? Is it a family member you just don't talk to anymore? Is it a government official like Zacchaeus? Who do you need to challenge yourself to pray for as the psalmist prays, as Jesus prays, as the writer of Hebrews prays, as the great cloud of witnesses encourages us to pray for? I want you to pray for this person or people. You got more than one, you got a more opportunity. Pray for them all by name, day in and day out. And let's put a time frame on it that sounds pretty biblical. 40 days. Let's challenge ourselves as a congregation. 40 days of praying for betrayers, false friends, people we think there's no way. Let's check back September 25th how our prayers have come along what changes they've made. We may start angry when you pray, and you do that prayer that you know you can't really stick with, but maybe that's the only way you can start. The prayer that says, God, make that person repent. It's not a bad start. (laughs) Not the best way to end. As soon as I find myself praying, God, make that person repent, I go, oh, me too. Make me repent. And I remember how Jesus prayed while he was nailed to a cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Okay, we can start to pray that way. You can give yourself time and space over 40 days to grow in these prayers. And we keep going and we start to get to that point maybe where we pray, God, give me an opportunity to reach out to this person again to be a part of the reconciliation, the way that Joseph and David and Esau and Jesus and all these great cloud of saints got to be an opportunity to do. Maybe when we start praying, we don't want to call them by name, but we keep going and God gives us their true name. This is a son of Abraham. This is a friend I gave you and blessed you in that friendship for a time. This is a brother. This is a sister. This is a child of God. And Jesus died on the cross for everybody. That includes those who betrayed him. His brothers, James and Jude. For Zacchaeus. For Judas. He gave in love for Judas. He paid for our sins. He paid for the sins of that person that I feel like I don't want to pray for, but I will. And we believe that moment, the cross, was the chapter where everything turned around, where there was resolution for the things that you could not imagine there being resolution for. That moment, Jesus' perfect sacrifice on the cross is more powerful than any evil, more powerful than any betrayal, for it is a moment that took in evil and betrayal and change them into love and God's grace. So when we pray, we claim all the effects of that sacrifice on the cross. The event that we believe by faith is more powerful than anything else that has happened to us. And by that gift of his cross, we go out and we get to buy back lost sheep after lost sheep in prayer, saying, God, let's bring them back. Make me a part of bringing him back. He wants us to live in the peace-giving power of that cross. Our part doesn't need to be huge. But I tell you where we should start. We should start where we think grace will least take root. Because it's God's work. We say, all right. (laughs) You brought your child, Jesus, into the womb of a virgin? 
You brought him back out of a grave. If you can bring life there, you can bring it anywhere. So Jesus starts with Zacchaeus, an agent of Rome, a tax collector. But it wasn't a few years later until Paul was writing from prison in Rome saying, by the way, family members of Caesar's own household now believe and are Christians. That was the audacity of grace in that early church. Let's follow the great cloud of witnesses. Let's be bold in bringing grace to people we think we could never bring it to. Let none of us rest until we have returned the word sister or brother to the one who had been betrayer. But his betrayal is not the last word. That betrayal can be forgotten forevermore in grace upon grace. All praise to Christ the Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise to confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, who was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, our fathers in the faith gave a good confession of your truth before the powers of this world. In the spirit of Jeremiah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses, strengthen our hearts in the days of division to confess in our words and lives the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you inspired your servant Jeremiah to proclaim your word amid the lies of false prophets. Arm your servants in our day with the power of your Holy Spirit to contradict the lies of the enemy and build up your church upon the eternal foundation of your gracious word. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you settle the solitary in families in order to nurture their faith and train them in righteousness. Bless and strengthen parents to bring up their children to resist temptation and to do all things for the sake of your name. We pray also for those who've been given the blessed vocation of singleness, that you show them the unique ways that they can serve in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God Almighty, behold our nation and all those in authority in your mercy, and replenish them by your grace, that all who receive the sword would bear it according to your word, always inclining to your will and walking in your way. Grant that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, grant healing to the sick. We pray especially for the family of Pastor John Stebbins and his church out faith in Louisville. Bless them. Be with them. Give strength to the weak, endurance to bear up under trial, patience to await his deliverance, and peace to last. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your son promises division, even as he promises salvation. Inspire our hearts to prize our baptism and the communion of the saints above all other relations in this world even as we fervently pray and strive for the salvation of those we know and love. Lord, in your mercy. God of our fathers, you bless your church with the enduring witness of your saints who now rest from their labors. As we join their heavenly communion and our Lord's Supper, grant that we would share their faith in Christ now and to life's end. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear us, most merciful Father, and these are humble requests, which we offer unto you in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. 
With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ, which is for you. take and eat.
take and eat. This is the body of Christ. Jesus Max, take and eat the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you, Sandy. Here, take it the body of Christ. thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us the same in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
the cloud of witnesses around us, their lives of faith encourage and astound us. Hear how the Master prays their faith so fervent. Well done, my servant. The saints of old receive God's commendation. They lift as pilgrim as of his salvation. Through faith they conquered flame and sword and gallows. God's name to hallow. They call to us your timid footsteps lengthen. Throw off sin's weight, your halting weakness strengthen. We cut the faith we shed, our blood were martyred. Our lives we bartered. Come, let us fix our sight on Christ who suffered. He faced the cross, his sinless life he offered. He scorned the shame, he died our death enduring. Our hope securing. Lord, give us faith to walk where you are sending. On paths unmarked, eyes blind as to their ending. Not knowing where we that you lead us with grace precede us you Jesus you alone deserve all glory our lives unfold embraced within your story Past, present, future, you the same forever. You fail us never. Congregation may be seated. We have a few announcements. We've begun a new Bible study uh, for adult class on Sunday mornings. We are looking at God's favorite words. Uh, do we know what God's favorite words are? Eh, maybe not exactly, but we know which words are used most often in the Bible. So we're going to look at the words that are not the, a, you know, the, the small little words that show up in every sentence and are the most common words in any language. But those words like Israel, uh, that, that's one of the the most used words that we began to talk about today, and we started to distinguish between the way the word Israel is used before there's a monarchy, and then after the tribes of the north are dispersed, uh, and when they use that phrase, all Israel, and they're hoping for the restoration of all 12 tribes. Now Jesus picks 12 apostles to show that he's restoring all Israel and his kingdom. Uh, and then they ask that question, Lord, is it this time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he says, well, watch for the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, so we were looking at the word Israel today. We're going to keep going through these words. If there's a particular word you want to make sure that we cover, let me know. Um, what we're uh, hoping is to get a sense of a little bit more of the richness of how those words are used and why the Bible is translating different words in different ways in different places and what those nuances are. Um, we're also starting a new Bible study this Wednesday for our Zoom uh, hybrid in-person and Zoom Bible class. Andy and Nancy are still driving back from vacation, but they will be here Wednesday and invite you to come and join this Bible study in their home. We're going to be studying Paul's two letters to the Thessalonians. These are some of the earliest correspondence that we have from Paul, and they talk about the question of what's this return of Jesus? Uh, what's it going to look like? Uh, and if he's going to come back fast, can't we stop working? Just kind of sit on the couch? Uh, so Paul's letters to the Thessalonians talk about those issues and more and look forward to beginning to cover them. If you want to join by Zoom, uh, we'll be sending out an invite for Zoom. If you want to join in person, come on now. We'll enjoy good food and fellowship together or you can stay at home in your PJs and be on the couch like the Thessalonians. Uh, other announcements people want to bring to our attention, Dave? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, other announcements we want to bring to our attention? Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. I'm going to have to go back and see if I signed up for something. I think I might have. All right, Corey. Two things. Um, ladies, the plan this month is dinner at uh, Red Lion and Science Hill with getting the name correctly. So, heard from a few of you. Um, probably going to make a reservation just to ensure we have enough seating. So, if you haven't responded to an email or let me know that you are interested in any dates you can, uh, please do that as soon as you can this week so I can. Second thing, Wednesday, this Wednesday is uh, Battle of Badges, so after church we need to move all of the views, so anybody that can stay at home can do. And we also need donors. I know it's last minute, but if you know anybody, please yourself, that donate blood for, or I believe they're also doing uh, red blood cells, uh, please let me know if you need to find how to find our Thank you, Corey. So both uh, adult um, introduction to the Bible, catechism, and church history, Lutheranism 101 class, uh, and uh, junior confirmation are going to get started after rally day. Uh, we're starting to collect information as people are telling me when they would want those things to be. Confirmation's Wednesday nights, but we've moved the day, you know, the time it starts, 5.30, 6.30, 7, kind of move around in there. You got to get people who are in school, back from school, and not go so late because it's a school night, so we try to hit that sweet spot, uh, usually around 6 o'clock, give or take an hour. Um, so happy to get uh, feedback from people who want to participate in that. And Lutheranism 101 looks like it might be a weeknight, um, may also be on Wednesday, after confirmation, potentially. So if you're interested in that class or know somebody who's interested, let me know as we'll be getting that one started again. Other announcements people want to bring to our attention? Suzanne? Thank you, Suzanne. I saw Marilyn.
Mm. Yeah, you can come casually, you can bring a change of clothes, however you want to do it. So we uh, will pray that uh, Rally Day goes well, and it's a great opportunity to invite people, uh, especially people with kids, to come get a taste of Sunday school at 945, uh, to enjoy the food and fellowship that we're going to celebrate afterwards. So do some inviting this week and praying for those who are inviting and a return of uh, more of our Sunday school kids as we get started again with the Sunday school year. Any other announcements people have for us? Dave. Yes. <laughs> but homemade relishes. Yeah. Homemade sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Anybody have any sauerkraut on the back porch? Uh, oh. We need to get some more German Lutherans in this congregation. Uh, um, I don't know. Uh,